Welcome to the Congregational Church of Wells as we gather on Pentecost Sunday, the day that we celebrate the giving of the Spirit of Christ to the church to empower the church's ministries. My thanks to the worship team for making these live streaming services possible, and thanks to the musicians who enriched these experiences. Our liturgist today is Gail Moulton. In addition to this live streaming service, there will be an in-person prayer service this afternoon at 4 p.m. at the back of the parking lot. Please bring a chair and a mask. Coffee with Friends will meet at the church tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Again, you are asked to bring a chair and a mask along with your cup of coffee. There will be a Zoom meeting of the worship team tomorrow night, May 24th at 6 p.m. Let us join together now for our call to worship. Good morning. We gather for song and scripture, seeking comfort and hope, seeking to be inspired as well as challenged. We gather to retell, retell the ancient, ancient tales and wonder how God's story, story continues to unfold. unfold. Today we tell the story of Pentecost, the story of the Holy Spirit rushing in like wild wind and dancing like flames upon each of the disciples. And we, we ask, ask ourselves, where we see the Holy Spirit present in our world today? Today we tell a story of the Holy Spirit igniting hope again. We will hear Peter claim his identity, tell his story, and inspire others to see the holy at work in the world. And we will ask ourselves, if we are ready to share our own stories. Friends, welcome. Welcome to this time with all questions, doubts, and wonders. And find here an invitation to experience something ancient and something new. May we be open to the Spirit. May we be open to learning from one another. May we grow in faith, hope, and love. Please join together as we sing hymn number 326, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Sing in a stable, you 
cried from a hill And you whispered in silence And the whole world was still And down in the city You called once again When you blew through your people On the rush of the wind Spirit Our prayer of invocation this morning is inspired by Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Come, Holy Spirit, the one who sang a new melody as God's creation rose from chaos, who wept at the dark shadow of a cross, and who danced early in the morning at the opening of an empty tomb. Come, Holy Spirit, the one who could not be contained by wind or flame or breath, the one who blesses the church with courage, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, to us, who gather this day with trembling hands and uncertain hearts. Teach us to sing a new song and to dance with reckless abandon. Here in this gathering of believers, as you did with those so long ago, breathe on us now. Breathe on us, blowing away our fears and our hesitations. <clears throat> Breathe on us, transforming our hard-heartedness into passion-filled lives. Breathe on us, for we need peace, peace that only you can give. In Jesus' name, amen. As we share in our joys and concerns, I would like to once again express my thanks to all those who are calling or keeping in touch in various ways with members and friends of the church family. The chair of our care team, Judy Ryan, has asked me to share the following joys and concerns. It is a joy to congratulate Gloria and Tim on the birth of their great-granddaughter, Madeline, J Madeline J. Jim has asked for prayers for his friend Kathy, who has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Joanne has asked for prayers for Scott, Jenna Lee, and for Michael's family. Michael passed away recently. Prayers for all those dealing with various issues, including Marilyn, Todd, Paulina, Emily, Barbara, Sue, Jean and Neil, Peg, Gloria, and Nancy. We ask for prayers as well for Ginny, Jean, Tony, David, Nadine, Shannon, Roberta, William, and Jen. Prayers as well for Harry, Bill, Kevin, Bobby, Alan and Selena, John, Amy, Courtney, Lee and Rita, Christine, Claire, Carol, Cindy, Steve, Ray, Larry, and Jean and Bruce. There are many in our circle of church family and friends who continue to mourn the loss of loved ones during the past many months since we've been unable to safely be together. May they all be comforted knowing that they are in our prayers. Every thought is a prayer and everyone is deeply appreciated. Let us join now for our pastoral prayer. God of the ages, we give humble thanks for the awesome gift of the Holy Spirit bestowed at Pentecost. We are grateful for the continuing presence of that spirit in the church to empower the church's ministries and to enable the church to do that which it would not be able to do on its own. On this celebration of the birthday of the church, 
May we acknowledge the mighty power of the wind of the Holy Spirit as it blows through our lives and through our churches. God, we continue to give thanks for the encouraging signs regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Help us to continue to be vigilant and may people continue to get vaccinated so as to protect themselves and others. May we continue to move forward with your help so that we can move more fully reconnect with one another. As we offer these prayers, we pray also for those around the world who continue to struggle with the pandemic and who are uh, continuing to try to become vaccinated uh, so as to protect them from the onslaught of this disease. We lift up in prayer those that we name in our joys and concerns, and we pray that you might offer healing and comfort, strength and hope to all. Now, as we offer these prayers before you, Lord, let us also join for a moment of silence, remembering those concerns that lie deep within each one of our hearts. We lift up these prayers before you, Lord. Let us also pray in the words that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Congregational Church of Wells continues to be profoundly grateful for the generous financial support of so many in the midst of these challenging times. Our patience is wearing thin, but we continue to provide for our church's needs because we believe in the importance of sharing the love of Christ with one another and with others. Thank you for sustaining this church so that it can be empowered by the Holy Spirit to serve in Christ's name.
Thank you both. That was beautiful. Today's scripture reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. It's the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a noise came from heaven. It sounded like a strong wind blowing. The noise filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw something that looked like flames of fire. The flames were separated and stood over each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak different languages. The Holy Spirit was giving them the power to do this. Now there were some godly Jews in Jerusalem at this time. They were from every country in the world. A large crowd came together because they heard the noise. They were surprised because as the apostles were speaking, everyone heard in their own language. They were all amazed at this. They did not understand how the apostles could do this. They said, look, these men we hear speaking are all from Galilee, but we hear them in our own languages. How is this possible? We are all from different places. Parthia, Media, Elam, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, the areas of Libya near the center of Cyrene, Rome, Crete, and Arabia. Some of us are born Jews, and others have changed their religion to worship God like Jews. We are from different countries, but we can hear these men in our own languages. We can all understand the great things they are saying about God. The people were all amazed and confused. They asked each other, what is happening? But others were laughing at the apostles, saying they were drunk from too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the other 11 apostles. He spoke loudly so that all people could hear. He said, my Jewish brothers and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me. I will tell you something you need to know, so listen carefully. These men are not drunk, as you think. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. But Joel, the prophet, wrote about what you see happening here today, and this is what he wrote. God says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions your old men will have special dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit on my servants, men and women, and they will prophesy. I will work wonders in the sky above. I will cause miraculous signs on the earth below. There will be blood, fire, and smoke, thick smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be as red as blood. Then the great and glorious day of the Lord will come, and everyone who trusts in the Lord will be saved.
Jesus keeps his promises. At the beginning of the book of Acts, Jesus makes a promise to the disciples that they will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus continues by saying, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. A few moments ago, we heard the dramatic description of the giving of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Pentecost was originally a holiday celebrated by the people of Israel, sometimes called the Feast of Weeks, and was a time to give thanks to God for the first fruits of the crops that had been planted earlier that year. It was also a holiday that celebrated the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. It was because of this Jewish holiday that Jews from all over the known world were gathered together in Jerusalem. In the midst of this annual holiday, an incredible thing happened. The Holy Spirit was made manifest in the midst of all those who had journeyed to Jerusalem for the festival. But that's not all. We are told that the Spirit became visible as flames of fire resting over the head of the disciples, accompanied by a sound like the rush of a violent wind. Not only that, but all those who were gathered for the holiday, no matter where they came from, could understand what the disciples were saying in their own native language. This was a momentous event which gave birth to the Church of Jesus Christ. For it was through the gift of the Holy Spirit that the Church received power to be the presence of Christ in the world. Indeed, it is through the gift of the Holy Spirit that the words of Jesus in John 14 come to pass, where Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. This day is crucially important for our lives and for our churches. For without the Spirit given at Pentecost, we can do very little. We are just another social organization. But through the power of the Spirit given at Pentecost, we are able to re represent Jesus Christ in our lives and in our church. Our presence is like a mustard seed. You will recall that Jesus talked about mustard seeds, saying that they are the smallest of all seeds, and yet they produce a huge plant. That's what life in the church is like. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, small things can mean a lot. A few months ago, the church leadership undertook a canvas of this congregation to check in with everyone to see how we were doing in the midst of this prolonged pandemic. In fact, I was ple pleasantly surprised when my wife and I received a call uh, from someone checking in on us. I can't remember the last time that that has happened in my experience in the church. It was not a huge undertaking but I believe that the impact was great. That's the way it is with the Holy Spirit. Small seeds lead to big results. Another sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit given at Pentecost is the way that barriers of communication disappear. All the pilgrims that had gathered at Jerusalem that day were able to hear the proclamations of the disciples in their own tongue. Reverend Emily Heath, a United Church of Christ still speaking devotional writer from a few, wrote a few years back, made an interesting point about this passage where she said, every year on Pentecost Sunday, I get the feeling that the church misses the point. In Acts, the people around the disciples do not suddenly learn to speak the disciples' language. It's the other way around. The Holy Spirit gives them the ability to speak the languages of the people gathered around them. They were in the middle of an international crowd with many different languages, and they could suddenly communicate with everyone. I think this is about learning to speak in ways that are relevant to the people around us. 
Pentecost offers a challenge to all of us. Break down barriers, speak the language of those around us, help people to feel a connection with the church and with God. You know, the story is told about two brothers who had farms adjacent to one another. And for years, they were very close. They were sharing with one another and helping one another with their work. But one, one year, a conflict developed between the two of them, which became more and more intense. And it got so intense that one of the brothers said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build a wall between my property and my brother's property so that I don't even have to look at my brother and look at his home. So he hires a carpenter, and he tells the carpenter what he has in mind. Uh, the, the farmer goes into town, trusting that the carpenter will do as he has been asked. When the farmer comes home, he's very surprised because there is no wall between his property and that of his brothers. Instead, there is a bridge, a bridge that enabled the two of them to connect with one another, to communicate with one another, to be reconciled with one another. I believe that that is what the message of Pentecost is about, that the Holy Spirit enables us to make connections with one another, to build bridges with one another, so that uh, we can speak in the language of those that perhaps would, would not be able to understand us otherwise. This is a story. This day is an event which helps us to find ways of reconciliation and peace with one another and with God. What makes the church different? What is unique about our faith communities? That we are empowered and inspired by the Holy Spirit, whose presence can be seen in mustard seed ministries that start small and bear much fruit, and whose presence can be seen when communication breaks down barriers and allows greater closeness to God. May the power of Pentecost be with us not only today, but as we minister in Christ's presence throughout the year. And now as you enter a new week, may you experience God's presence. May you feel God pouring out the Holy Spirit over your heads and your thoughts and the words of your lips, over your hearts and your feelings and emotions and your compassion for all others, and over your hands and your feet as you put into action all that God commands you. During this week, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen.